Hello, everyone. Welcome to this introduction to the DIA's special exhibition, By Her Hand, Artemisia Gentileschi and Women Artists in Italy, 1500 to 1800. My name is Lara Roni. I'm a research assistant for Italian art at the DIA. And it is my pleasure to introduce you to this exhibition, which is a groundbreaking one for the museum. By Her Hand is the first time that we've dedicated an exhibition to early women artists, focusing on this very vibrant time and place of Italy from the Renaissance to the Enlightenment and illuminating the extraordinary contributions that women brought to the art world of their time. By Her Hand explores the lives and works of 17 artists, the struggles they overcame and the successes they achieved as they navigated their careers winning the recognition of their contemporaries and even widespread fame in their lifetimes. In nearly 60 artworks, including significant loans from museums in the US and abroad, private collections, and works from the DIA's permanent collection, the exhibition showcases the creative depth of Italy's early women artists. Paintings, prints, drawings, books, miniatures, and mixed media come together to reveal the versatility of these artists who conquered every genre from portraits and self-portraits to still life to religious, mythological, and historical subjects. Artemisia Gentileschi, who anchors this exhibition as the most renowned woman artist in 1600s Italy, is best known today for her very bold depictions of women like the DIA's Judith and a maidservant with the head of Holofernes, an entirely original retelling of an immensely popular subject and an absolute exhibition highlight. Gentileschi also explored her own identity in her art using her own features as the point of departure in these three closely related paintings. Only two of them are true self-portraits and in them Gentileschi appears in different guises once as a lute player, and once taking on the attributes of St. Catherine of Alexandria. But did she really play the lute, or is she just playing a role here? Is she trying to tell us that she identifies with St. Catherine in some way? We don't know for certain, but in getting us to wonder who is this artist, and what is she trying to tell us about herself, these self-portraits are working their magic. They pique our curiosity about Gentileschi, and here at an early point in her career when she needed to create a fascination around herself to attract the attention of art buyers, including her own features was a pretty clever way of boosting her profile. By Her Hand explores how other women artists uh, promoted themselves, marketed their talents and employed business savvy to get ahead in their careers. In Cremona in the 1550s, Sofonisba Anguissola painted more self-portraits than any other artist of her generation, kickstarting her career by gifting them to the rulers of the most influential courts of Italy as a way of attracting their patronage. As word of her talents spread, her reputation eventually reached the King of Spain, who invited her to join his court as a lady-in-waiting. Not only had she scored the job offer of a lifetime, but her position also allowed her to paint portraits of the royal family. As the first woman artist in Italy to build an in international reputation, Anguissola set an important precedent, proving that an artistic vocation could be a respectable way for a woman to make her way in the world. In 1700s Venice, Rosalba Carriera combined innovative techniques and business sense to earn unprecedented fame. She took tried and true art forms like miniature paintings and portraits and reinvented them, setting artistic trends with her miniatures painted on ivory and portraits executed in pastel. Carriera's works were incredibly marketable, coveted by travelers making the grand tour, and she sold them to an endless line of customers out of her studio in Venice, strategically located on the Grand Canal, where she welcomed visitors from all over Europe and built a clientele that would spread word of her reputation um, whenever they, wherever they went when they returned home. To manage her very thriving business, 
Carriera employed other women in her studio, teaching them her innovative techniques and using her own cre career success to create opportunities for the next generation of women artists. Visitors will also discover how women broke barriers and challenged conventions in the art world of their day. The trailblazing painter Lavinia Fontana worked on commission right alongside her male peers in the highly competitive art market of Bologna in the second half of the 16th century. Fontana was a highly sought after portraitist beloved especially by the women of Bologna but she also created an unprecedented number of altarpieces for churches, like her massive martyrdom of St. Stephen, destroyed in a fire, but known through this engraving. With nearly 30 figures, many over life size, this was the kind of commission for which women were rarely considered. Their training, which often excluded them from firsthand study of the human figure, didn't prepare them to depict so many bodies in complex poses on such a large scale. But Fontana became the first woman in, in Italy to consistently be chosen to create public altarpieces, sometimes even outcompeting her male contemporaries for these prestigious uh, commissions. Fontana's successor in Bologna, Elisabetta Sirani, also challenged ideas about what women artists could or could not do. In her unprecedented depiction of the ancient Roman Portia, Serrani shows this heroic woman inflicting a wound in her thigh so that she can prove to her husband, the Senator Brutus, that she has the courage to share in the secret of his plot to assassinate Julius Caesar and to keep that secret no matter what. No other artist had shown Portia in this exact moment where she acts with such agency to prove her worth as a woman. Serrani's approach is pure innovation, and in a time when women artists weren't typically credited with the capacity to innovate, Serrani's contemporaries not only recognized the originality of her ideas, but they celebrated her for it. They flocked to her studio to watch her at work, to see her invent compositions on the spot and to witness her creative mind in action. At the exhibition's conclusion, this quiet self-portrait of the little known 18th century Florentine painter, Anna Baccarini Piazzoli, speaks volumes about the integral place women held and still hold in the history of art. Presenting herself here unmistakably in her role as a professional artist at work, Piatelli gifted her self-portrait in 1776 to the ruling Grand Duke of Tuscany with the express intention that her portrait would join the famous collection of artist self-portraits that was being formed at the Uffizi Gallery at this moment in history. This collection was seen as a kind of who's who of great artists throughout history. And here was this woman literally inserting herself into that illustrious history. Piatelli's assertion that she'd earned representation among her fellow artists is a fitting end to this exhibition that has the power to change perceptions of art history and who is included and who is represented on the walls of the museum. So please join us in exploring the stories of the women artists of Italy at By Her Hand on view now through May 29th at the Detroit Institute of Arts. Thank you.